everybody, and it's Sandra, and good chef. I am going to start with my apron, as I usually do. I'm going to put Elvis today. Yay. Okay. Elvis deserves every day. I like to change it up, though. Mm. And, um, we're making some English muffins. They're going to be bomb as shit, because I got this really good recipe. I always have good recipes, so you should just always take my recipes and make them, or make them yourself. You can make them your own. Like, I have recipes that I follow, but I change them up all the time. Like, okay, so I don't want to wait for um, English muffins to rise with yeast for like an hour or two while it's just sitting there and I'm just doing nothing. Um, so, we're going to use baking powder instead of yeast, and you can, um, make it so that it's like an equal trade. Um, so for, for instance, we're going to use one packet of yeast, if we use yeast, and that's two and a quarter tablespoon, two and a quarter teaspoons, teaspoons. And, um, so instead of the yeast, we'll just use the baking powder and, um, it's two and a quarter teaspoon stuff. And then we also use baking soda, so they act together and they help your English muffins rise as they cook in the skillet. So you don't have to wait for them to proof like you would yeast. Cause that's bullshit. I'm just like, I like to do everything faster and easier. It's more efficient. Um, so anyway, let's see. Um, first of all, well, with yeast, you would have to make the milk warm. But uh, with baking powder, you don't really have to. I mean, it's whatever. But my recipe is gonna call for two, uh, two cups of milk. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Where's my cup? Where's my fucking cup? Mm, it's over here. Nah, I'm gonna eat Are these cool? I think. Mm -hmm. I think I got these. I might have got these from Amazon or as a gift from someone. I'm not sure. I don't remember I got them. I think I don't, like, you can get these at Kohl's. They're awesome. They're collapsible. They're shit. Okay. So, I need two cups of milk. And I'm not sure. I don't think I'll have enough milk. We'll see. Mmm. Oh, man. Mmm. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, man. Mmm. I bet. We did. It's awesome. I'm stoked. Okay, but in case you don't have enough milk, I had um, whipping cream, and you can always use the whipping cream in place of the milk, but you have to um, water it down like a third to a half of the way with water. Um, just, I mean, depending on how creamy you want the milk or whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's how you would do it if you didn't have enough milk. But I had enough, so that's awesome. Okay, so then you want to add your leavening, which are the baking powder and the baking soda. They're leavening agents. And they make the product rise and poof up. So, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Since it's not like um, the yeast recipe, yeast feel, feeds off of sugars and there's honey in this recipe. Um, so if the honey were in there and you put that in the milk first and then you heat it up and, um, to like 110 degrees or so and, um, then you add the yeast and like it'll warm up and it'll, um, feed off the sugars of the honey if you whisk it all together. And, um, but we're not going to do that. We're just using baking powder. So, I don't really care. Um, and I am, already have soft butter. I put it out the night before. Um, in the recipe, it says to melt it, so it's either way, but um, that's also using yeast. Uh, yeah. And so I have the butter, and right now I'm going to put three tablespoons of honey in. I got my tablespoon right here, and we're going to put it in there. Mmm. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Right, there's one. Um, and I helped you out with one, but, mm, you know, whatever. We'll just guess the map based on whatever. It doesn't have to be totally accurate. I mean, baking is a science, but at the same time, 
you can uh, adjust a little bit here and there not entirely so it's totally crazy messed up and different but just like I mean if there's a little extra sugar you might get a little more browning or if you if you have a little less sugar it won't be as sweet etc etc but I mean I don't mind like a little extra honey I kind of just like did um over four tablespoons of honey so maybe they'll be a little more sweet or something It'll be good. I'm stoked. Alright, there we go. Fuck. Oh, some sticky shit. Gotcha. Okay. Oh. Okay. Then you so normally at this the milk would be warm with yeast and up to like between 103 to 10 degrees and you would let the yeast um feed on the sugars of the honey for like five minutes or so um but we have baking powder to substitute that baking powder is a bicarbonate and a, 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 an acid and um cream of tartar or uh, uh cornstarch mixed together so it all like even stuff out and it makes it so it works right let's see so what i need to do i needed two and a half quarter teaspoons i got this from pampered chef it's nifty little thing it like mo measures like multiple sizes so i got my teaspoon right here i'll do two teaspoons of this whole thing one two and then like i can just shift like this all the way up to a quarter and um, grab the last quarter, scrape it off on my little mess size, put it in. It's dandy. It's just like that. It's awesome. Alrighty. And then we have, um, what do we have? Oh, usually, I think, we have salt, but, mm-mm. Okay. Oh, um, you know what? Just for good measures, I... I don't know, using baking powder for yeast is kind of the same thing, so you don't necessarily have to use any baking soda, but I've seen recipes with baking soda and baking powder. I am just going to use maybe like a oh, quarter of a teaspoon maybe, or an eighth of a teaspoon, let's see, what do, what do we want to do? Uh, yeah, I'm going to use, uh, I just, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna use a teaspoon. Oh, no. I'm gonna give it a little extra leavening powder. Sure, why not, right? Get a little extra fluffiness and more airiness in your English muffins. That's gonna be awesome. So, I'm just gonna take a whisk and like whisk this shit around in my um, ball real quick. So, it's kind of like mixed, and the uh, dough hook doesn't really have the ability to get like honey. Um, evenly distributed with milk or something. Well, why not give it a help along? Let's whisk it a little bit. And there we go. Uh, I should do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then you can add it better. I think that's the way it should go. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's see. Honey, the yeast. Okay. And an important part in making English muffins is egg because it also helps with fluffiness. So, I do one large egg and then I do... The four tablespoons of the butter, and I'm gonna melt it a little bit, I guess. How about it? I don't have a microwave, so I'm just gonna use a little pot. And I am, after I melt this butter, you have four tablespoons of butter, and um, melt it. Don't let it get too bubbly, just like melt it, just to like, get it melted. And if you put it out the night before and let it get soft, it's easier to melt. It won't take as long. You just need it on like a low to medium heat. Just melt it, melt it over like a minute or two. It'll happen pretty quick. 
Let's see. Here we go. No, no, no. I'm going to get a knife. Cut this butter in half because this is like a full half a cup, which is eight tablespoons. And here we are. Cut it in half. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Put it in this uh, it up, pan. Pot. Whatever. Oh, fuck it. Oh. Alright, there you go. Yeah, let's see now. <laughs> I think we can turn on that. And you know what? Since this might mix pretty fast, um, I am going to put the um uh pan that we're gonna cook the uh English muffins in just on hold for that so I'm gonna warm it up and just keep it warm so it'll be ready and what else so mm, let's see then oh you need the egg you need the butter we're gonna crack the egg crack, crack it on a flat surface always a flat a uh, hard surface not on the edge of the bowl because then you risk uh shells getting into your bowl the flat hard surface just guarantees a cleaner crack and you won't be, um get any shell into your bowl unless somehow magically you do i don't know it should be it shouldn't be too hard to finagle so my butter's melting i turn it on oh yeah it's on medium but i'm gonna turn it down a little bit so it melts a little slower and is not bubbling too much and evaporating so I'm just going to throw it around in here so until that melts and it does pretty fast like that's pretty awesome mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's awesome. So I am going to get that whisk again. And here, let's take the dough hook off for a second. Just for a second. Cause we're gonna whisk this and like you wanna whisk your egg and your milk batter or whatever. Until I mean it's even is mixed together and you wanna whisk it while you're pouring in the melted butter because if it's still hot, it'll cook it and then it'll have like chunks of cooked egg in your batter and you don't want that yeah we don't want that but if you whisk it while you're pouring the hot butter in um it'll uh kind of just cool down as it goes in because the milk is cool but if you are using yeast you want the milk to be warm so just remember that i don't know it's okay we're good okay cool um now it almost happened to me. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. There's my light. Let's see now. And uh, let's see. We want duh, 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 duh. okay five cups of bread flour. Okay. So I don't have bread flour. Bread flour has a different uh, amount of gluten to uh, make your bread. Rise more properly. And all purpose flour works pretty good for that as well. Um, all purpose flour is all purpose flour, for, so it's for like anything. But um, I would probably prefer bread flour to make your bread products. It's just like the right amount of gluten and gives it the right um, amount of fluffiness and rising. So it just helps it along. Um, but I just don't have bread flour, so I uh, am using all purpose. It wants five cups. Let's see. Uh, let's see how many cups we got in here. I got a. Uh, where's my whole cup? Oh, it's over here. All right. I don't know. I need to pick that up. Okay. Try this all. So all that far doesn't just get everywhere. All right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's kind of 
pretty dry, so if I don't stick it in there. And you can, if it's wet even, I mean, if your cup's wet and the fire sticks in there, you can just take a spatula to it and scrape it off. And it's pretty easy that way. So then when I swipe cups of fire, I take my fire and I flatten it against the side of the bag. And put it in. And let's see, five to five. One and a half teaspoon salt. Okay. Now, if you do this, you do this, get your five cups of fire, and that's two and three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And five. Wow, this is about shit. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so I did have enough fire. That's good. Now you put a dough hook on, like a medium speed or something. With your mixer. I mean, I recommend it to have a dough hook. Um, I have a KitchenAid Industrial Orbital Mixer, so it's really handy and it's a good thing to have if you plan to do a lot of baking. Um, it's really easy to handle and uh, if you just respect your machine and always clean it, it will always do you wonders. Okay, so we're going to turn this on medium here. Let's see. Yeah. Kinda. I'm on two right now, but I mean... We'll turn it up once it, um, forms a dough more. Because we don't want flour to fly all out of the, uh, bowl. Alright. And real quick, I'm gonna scrape the sides so that, like, all that, um, loose flour and, um, batter or milk or whatever, um, that came up on the sides gets down there. And, um, it all gets mixed season evenly as well. And then, before mixing it, we have salt. And we're going to do a teaspoon and a half of salt. Teaspoon. Mm hmm And I always pour my salt over the sink so that, uh, it doesn't, like, overflow and make a mess and make my stuff too salty. And so I can just, like, fill it up and shake it off and dab it in. Cup, teaspoon. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Just, oh, that was hot. All right, there we go. Cool. So then, and let's start mixing in. And I'll do it a little faster. It's not like so. Um, it's not so wet anymore or PC or whatever. So that it's not. Um, I guess it's just coming more together. It's becoming a dough. And I'm going to mix it until it becomes like a sticky kind of dough and it's all away from the sides, kind of. And, uh, yeah, there it goes. See? Alright. There we go. It all came away from the sides. This is a sticky dough. Um, so, this is what we're going to do. Uh, let's see. I am going to put all this stuff away. Real quick, because I'm going to use the same kind of space that I have my mixer on to roll these out with um, baking soda, baking powder. Um, you don't have to wait for them to rise. You can just roll them out and use a round cutter to cut um, the uh, shape of your English muffin. And I'll show you that in just a sec. Mm -hmm. There you go. Alright, so I'm gonna plug this. And this over here. Mm -hmm. And this has to be clean. I always clean my counters before I start anything, so when they're clean counters, I can just put it right out on here. Mm. Alright, let's see. Butter, snide, and sink, whatever, etc., etc. Okay, now is that my pan it's heating behind me it's gonna be ready when i'm ready to land the english muffin in the pan there we go i'm gonna keep it on medium and so it's gonna heat up a little more than it was before now let's see oh, i'll get the dough and i'll be get the flour here's the flour mm -hmm. lower the lever for you and i am going to flour my surface first so that it can pick up more flour and it can just become like, just like unsticky. 
just unsticky. Not like completely unsticky. So it's dry, but just I'm like, yeah. Alright. So um with any um bread product, quick breads, yeast breads, etc. Um, you don't want to mix it too long or else it'll become tough and hard when you bake it. So um I mixed it just a, just the right amount so that it came together, it came against from the wall, like and it wrapped around the dough hook, and um it did not mix for too long. And so it just formed a dough, right? Now I'm gonna put flour on it. I don't know, like marinate it a little bit. I don't know. Um I'm just gonna like need some of the flour into it so it just becomes unsticky. Alright, I'm gonna see. Yeah, this is good. And um with yeast, um you want to uh, make it into separate pieces. And you will um, divide the whole thing in two, two, and then you'll divide all those ones into eight. So it makes sixteen um, in this one all together. Just about, and also you know it depends on the size that you want them. You can make them as big or as little as you want. So let's do that. I'm putting it on a floured surface. Since I have baking powder and baking soda instead of yeast. Mmm. I am going to roll it out. I like to roll it out and use my round cutters. Here we go. We got the box right here. And I got a rolling pen right here. Okay. And I got a box of round cutters. Like, it is, I think there's 11 or 12 in here. It's a full set. And so, you can pick the size that you want. I think standard would maybe be, like, the second or third one from the outer edge. Let's try, uh, I don't know, let's see which ones. Oh, yeah, maybe the second one from the outer edge. That looks right. Mm-hmm. So... We're going to roll it, but you can make it as thick or as thin as you want, but I suggest maybe, um, just rolling it out to, uh, maybe between a half and a quarter inch, and then just do that, um, roll it out, mm, just like this, um, there we go. One of them. There we go. That's kind of thin. Okay, and of course, they're going to rise when you cook them. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. That's good. I think. Yeah, that's about a quarter inch ish. Uh, maybe between a quarter and a half inch. Now I'm going to do a little thinner. I know, but you still want them thick enough so when they rise to um, be able to cut them down the center if you want to have them as a sandwich or put jelly on each side or whatever you want to do. Okay, so I'm rolling around a little more. I think I think that was what I said. Oh. And I'm going to use my ground cutter and we're just going to like cut, like use as much space as we can. So I'm going to put this on the very edge so that all the edges are touching. But it's on the very edge so that you're using it in the space that you can. Cut it down. And then I'm going to do it to the next one, like the closest as I can. Without it going over. And without, you know, um, uh, losing, having too much negative space. And I'm just going to do this all the way around. Like so, make sure that I have as much of the dough used. As possible. I'm just kind of like this. Alright. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, there, that's one. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And then, uh, once you are done cutting them, you know, um, you can, um, cook them. So that's what I'm going to do. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I have ten when I rolled it out to a, uh, between a quarter and a half inch, and um, I used a round cutter. And now, of course, like, see how this extra dough? You can, like, mold it up or whatever and uh, mash it up and put it all back together and roll it back out if you want. You can do whatever you want. But, so, anyway, I have a cast iron skillet here. I put it on medium, yeah. And I have cornmeal. You want to put cornmeal on so it doesn't stick. And, I mean, it's just attached to um, English muffins that I guess is signature or so. Put cornmeal down. I have a cast iron skillet. I'm going to make sure that they don't stick to it. So I'm putting plenty of cornmeal down. And uh, here we go. Now I'm going to put uh, a bunch of my little rounds on there. Mm hmm. And this is a two. And here's a four. Mm hmm. And let's see if we can put two more on there. One, mm -hmm, two. Yeah, again. That's cool. We can fit six on my little pan. That's cool. I'm excited. So, you're going to cook them, and you're on medium heat for about, mm, I would say, maybe um, five or so minutes on each side or something like that. Five to maybe seven or eight minutes on each side. I'll just set a timer just to make sure. I mean, they'll start rising, and um, I'll check them on the other side after five minutes. How about that? And they're rising right now, and, like, they're pooping up, and that's how they cook. Like, English muffins are easy, and you just cook them in a skillet. See, I flipped them. They're all kind of nice and brown on one side, and they're getting brown on the other side. And they're all braising as they cook. And I have this cast iron skillet, and it kind of has lines in it, so, but it's not really doing anything detrimental to them. But, um, I, uh, grew up, um, baking on, or not really baking. But, like, I cooked on a hot griddle that was just, like, this double burner long um, cast iron uh, grill, I guess. It, it's a griddle. It's just, like, a big pan for your uh, stove. And you could, like, pancakes. You can cook English muffins on there. You can cook French toast or whatever. Grilled cheese sandwiches. It's a good thing to have. I don't have one. I just have this cast iron pan. It was just well. But I kind of just have to move it around a little bit here and there. Because, um, it's, uh, just, I mean, it, the, the cooking is a little uneven, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to cook these on a lower temperature now, since, like, they're all kind of, like, brown on the other side. It still feels a little soft to me. I don't know what it is. But, if you cook these, and then... They feel doughy still. Put me in the oven for 325. Um, for like five minutes or so. And depending on how well done they are, like I would recommend um, doing your cooking in the pan and like a medium to medium low heat. The longer they stay in the pan, the more they cook, like, the more well done they'll be. But, I mean, then after you're done um, baking them or cooking them or however you choose to make them, you get your trusty yum. We got cooling mats. And put them out so they can not cause condensation on the bottom or anything if they're sitting on a flat surface. And I'm uh, pop them down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Alright, check it out. So, I um, put them in the oven for maybe like five to seven minutes. Um, after I um, cooked them in the pan on each side for maybe five to seven minutes. And they poofed up in the oven, like, in the oven. They are totally fluffy and done, and they feel solid. And guess what? I am going to cut one, make sure it's perfect. Let's see what's up. All right, here we go. Let's cut it. Let's see. Uh, 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 let's see. 
Is it nice and airy inside? Uh, hmm. I mean, it's okay. It seems a little bit like it might be um semi biscuitish, but I mean, it's still kind of light and fluffy. It's, I mean, they rise, and I mean, maybe if you do a little less time on the pan and maybe uh, eight to ten minutes in the oven instead. And it might be a little more fluffy. It might come out different. Maybe we're going to try that next with the last four of my English muffins. But, you know, with these, they're done. So, you put them over here on the cooling rack. And they ain't done many English muffins. And um, this is probably the best English muffin recipe that you're going to find. And they're easy. They're homemade. And they taste great. And um, make sure... When you uh, cook things or bake things, I always taste them before things happen to them. Like, I always taste my dough to make sure I didn't fit, forget any ingredients. And um, for English muffins, uh, I use unsalted butter. But, like, you can use salted butter. It's just kind of, I mean, like, unsalted butter just makes it more, like, creamier and, like, make it, makes it, just, it gives it a slightly different taste. I don't know. But you're already adding the salt in there separately. So it's like, you'd have a little more salt if you had salt about it. I don't know. It depends how salty you like things. But I tasted the dough and it was pretty good. It's a, it's just has a hint of sweetness because of the honey. And uh, yeah, it cooks pretty good. They fluffed up like really, really nice in the oven after I put them in there, after cooking them on each side for um several minutes in the bin. There you go.